We're live. Hey, everybody. I'm Brad. And I'm Matt. And welcome to our latest AMA. So uh, today we have a few questions from our users here. So we're just going to go down the list and go through all of them. Uh, to start off with, we have, are you able to provide more details on the IPFS site building tools? So this is from Josh. Uh, so in the short term, uh, we're looking to release a few templates. Uh, to easily allow you to deploy an IPFS website from within the Unstoppable uh, web app. Uh, and then longer term, obviously, we'll keep evolving on those tools as we, uh, as we get better at working with them. Uh, the next question here is, to what extent would the web builder work? Is it like Wix, drag and drop? This is for, from Will. So another question about uh, decentralized websites. So <laughs> to start with, it'll be templates. Uh, and at this time, it's too early to predict the full feature set. Uh, yes, Wix is an inspiration uh, for how we ultimately see this product working. Um, and there's some things that we have to work with because it's a little bit different than deploying a normal website. Um, but yeah, we want to eventually get to a place where it feels very much like Wix. So that's a good example. Uh, next question is from Mark. It says, what will uh, the browser ex extension look like? Uh, and what browser will it work on? And uh, so it's going to initially work with Google Chrome. Um, also, we're working with other browser extensions, uh, specifically crypto browser extensions, to add support for blockchain domain resolution into their existing extensions. Um, we're open sourcing the code for doing this, reaping from the blockchain and, and resolving these uh, decentralized websites to make it easy so that uh, it's very easy to add this functionality into an existing extension. So also, if you're in the community and you have an existing browser ex extension, please let us know. And uh, as soon as we get this code released, we can uh, share that with you and, and get that into your product as well. Uh, next question, it's about the audits. So, and this is from Matt and hello, another Matt. The question is what can be shared about the two audits that are running in parallel? Uh, what has been found and fixed from the first and why the duplicate effort if you're happy with the first? Can you give us more insight behind the delay? So um, we always run multiple audit teams. So we actually had uh, two audit teams for the .zil launch uh, this summer as well, in addition to the Zilliqa Foundation themselves taking a look at the contracts. So I guess you could maybe count that as a third audit team. Um, the first audit, and, and what you want to do is complete the first audit, at least the first, the initial phase of the first audit, before bringing on the second set of auditors, um, and because that way they can build off the previous work that was done. Uh, so the first audit took longer to conclude than we had originally anticipated. Um, we had to add in lots of testing uh, to the design of the underlying Doc Crypto uh, contracts. We also had to, um, well, we didn't have to, but we decided to refactor the contract code to make it a little bit easier uh, to read uh, for the auditors. And then finally, we had to uh, contend with constraints on contract size um, on the Ethereum blockchain. Uh, so we had to just do some size optimization there, um, a little bit different than uh, Zillica. So the two audit teams are Chain Security and PepperStack, and Chain Security was the first audit team. So Chain Security, the first auditor, uh, they've actually finalized their report. So they had their initial report, went back and forth, did more reviews, and then we had their finalized report, uh, I think actually earlier this week that was concluded. Uh, and we've met their expectations regarding the security review. Uh, PepperSec has completed their preliminary audit this week. Um, we're trying to get updates back to them over the weekend so that we can get sign off from them early next week. And this will also allow us to start deploying uh, test contracts up to Ethereum mainnet next week in advance of the launch for Docker Do uh, the following week. And Brad, I think the next one's on you. Yeah, so this one is a question from M. Uh, what happens if my .crypto domain remains marked as brand protected after the manual review? Uh, so it'll continue to be held until the end of the .crypto sunrise period, which is December 2020. Uh, assuming it's not claimed by the brand during that period, you will be able to claim it. All right. So will there be a .crypto auction before Christmas? Uh, no, sorry, no auctions. Uh, immediately, we are focused on features that are going to let you all uh, use the domains. So uh, when are more domains going to be coming available? From James. So we're going to be releasing more tiers soon, uh, but we'll also have more info to share on premium domains very soon as well. Great. Next question is coming in from Mark. 
and it says, uh, will .crypto work in all the wallets that currently support .zil? So yes, soon after launch, uh, we're putting updates to our library uh, and our API endpoint concurrent with the .crypto launch. Uh, so for our partners, it'll be easily, easy to resolve .crypto names inside the wallets that already support uh, .zil. Oh, I'm sorry, this is me. Uh, when should we expect to see native Ethereum integrations for dot crypto, like marketplaces, decentralized exchanges, et cetera, et cetera, on chain? Uh, this is from Steve. So I would expect to see these things pretty quickly after dot crypto launches because uh, it's quite easy for apps to support blockchain domains. They're ERC-721 tokens, and there's a lot of different applications out there in the Ethereum ecosystem that uh, already support ERC-721 tokens. Yeah, and some of those will actually work uh, just by default, right? Because um, there'll already be part of the ERC-721 standard. Um, so uh, I, I imagine that a lot of the web browsers, for instance, uh, the DAP browsers rather, they, they'll just show the uh, Docker domain names um, automatically on launch. Or either way, there should be some low friction. So uh, the next one is from Bob. It says, if I can decide to take down your .com website, how would I manage my domain names? So we are releasing open source command line tools with the launch of our extensions. Uh, we already released these tools for .zil. Uh, you can find that Medium post from Braden uh, on our team. And we'll also release these same tools for .crypto. We already have them internally. We're using those for testing. Uh, so for now, I rely on these tools. Like if you really want to interact with this um, without having to worry about any interference from anyone, you want to go uh, from, from the command line. Uh, obviously, we're going to add support for, uh, on a decentralized network uh, in the future. Uh, we just got to get everything else out the door uh, for users, for you guys first, um, before we do that. Uh, yeah, so that's that. Next one up uh, is, will the ETH Istanbul fork affect .crypto? So yes, uh, unfortunately, it's going to make transaction costs a, a little more expensive. Uh, so that's the only effect um, from our analysis of the uh, Istanbul fork. Um, and it's not going to affect users because Currently, we're going to cover the transaction fees uh, for the initial setup and then basic use domains uh, for users, right? So, you know, getting your initial transactions, et cetera, um, outside of abuse. And uh, so there's not any need for you guys to worry about this yet. Uh, and then over time, I, I do expect fees on Ethereum to continue to be lower, or at least go lower uh, from where they're at currently. Cool. Well, thanks, everybody. Uh, appreciate you all. Uh, appreciate you all listening in. And um, more to come, more to come from us soon. Please uh, stay in, stay in the Telegram. You'll hear the latest. Yeah, thanks, guys.